Welcome to the second Radar Room Extreme project. Now, I can't work out whether this project here is more extreme than the other project. Transferring a video picture down a phone line. Now, you have to decide for yourself whether this is more extreme or not. What you see here is a floppy disk operating system and computer with a very old five and a quarter inch disk drive. Um, this was made and programmed in 1995, so it's a few years ago. I was hunting around um, in the loft and this was what I was actually looking for. This is another floppy disk operating system device but using a 68000 processor. I cannot find the information on it, um, which is a bit of a nuisance because I wanted to try it. It does work, but I would like the circuit diagram and all the bits that go with it. But uh, unfortunately, instead I came up with this. Um, this is made by the, the same person. Interesting enough, to show how ridiculously complicated it is, this entire book is the all of the details of the operating system for this. And you can gain the impression this is all machine code. The entire thing has been written in machine code. There's, there's assorted other bits and pieces in it. Um, like these bits, this is actually dumps um, from the... 68,000 thing. I, I know that for sure, and it's showing the it's showing the hex and the representation. If it's, there's a an ASCII character associated, these are programs that were written for it. Unfortunately, the discs sort of died. They've the discs have lost their oxide, and these have all gone corrupt, um, which is a shame. There's there's a printer test one. There's conversion ones. Then we go on to all these bits and pieces where you can see, obviously there's masses and masses and masses and masses. These are all subroutines. So, at the end of the day, it's worth actually trying to make this thing work, I think. So, we asked the question, what does it do? Well, it's a Z80 based device. There is a Z80 SIO. There is a floppy disk controller, that's a 2793. Obviously there's a there's 32k of RAM and a spare 8k. I think, I believe one is used for the operating system, the other for storage. Um, and obviously an 8k of ROM. Now there are various things that haven't been connected up so I don't know what these are for. Um, that's obviously the floppy disk one. Um, there's a reset button on here, two crystals etc. Now how it works is it works either on this display here where you can see the cursor flashing and the J in it or it works on a serial link so you can actually type stuff in say on a PC or, or another terminal device and talk and save save bits and pieces. So the type of things you can actually do with it, this is uh, this is the original um, operating system commands. There are lots and lots which are difficult. I was trying to go through them now. But there's some very obvious ones like dump. And you can dump the memory location, 128 bytes from, we'll show, show you how that works in a minute. Anywhere you like in memory, you can dump it. Then test, uh, if you're putting a new disk, disk drive on, just typing in test here puts in a program that flashes the light on and off on the drive to show that you have your links correct at the back. It's always a pain if you wonder why it's not working and that, that saves all that messing up. Peak, very useful to look at again. Once again, you look at any memory location, single one, and it tell you where it is. It's a little bit like sort of basic type stuff that, isn't it? Reset reboots the system. DSTAT is showing you the floppy disk status, etc. Et you can read any disk using our disk. You can create a, 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 a disk. This is called JDOS, by the way, because if you think you have MS-DOS and things like that, and this has a J on it, so therefore it's called JDOS. Well, that's original, isn't it? You can create, create, it, it formats it, all the data will be lost. There's a directory is very useful. That's just like on a, a DOS, an ordinary um, you know, MS-DOS thing. You just type DIR and it comes up with what's on the disk. Um, so you see, it's all that sort of thing. There's, there's format. There's poke is the way you actually do the programming. It took me a while to work out how you actually program the thing. But what you do is you poke the address and then you put comma and you put comma and the two uh, hex bytes, comma, two hex. You keep going, keep going, keep going, hit return and it saves them all. Um, and that's, that's how you actually write a program and I believe all the programs are written like that. You can save ASCII files, you can read ASCII files. Uh, text files, etc. So there you go. So it's programs, load, save memory, store, clear memory, run, uh, overwrite directories, list shows hex values from 7,060 is where it runs its programs from. There we go. I won't talk anymore because this, there's just so much to it. So initially, let's have a look at the reset. 
Very simple, we can see the J and the cursor flashing. If I press the little button that's up here that's reset, you'll see it quickly flash through its reset. It gave the JDOS version, etc, etc. Now it's much easier to see it on the serial. Okay, you probably recognise, anybody who knows old PCs, this gaudy blue colour was Windows XP. Okay, so we know the serial link is connected up to this unit. Let's call it the UDSS because that's what it was called. That's its original title, which is Universal Data Storage System. Press reset and let go, and there we go. It's UDSS, JDOS version 2.5, Octo to 95. RAM is uh, 32K and an 8K. J is the same as a C prompt, um, or an A prompt if it's on a floppy disk, if it's on a PC. Um, so that's where J comes from. So what, let's do some very quick things. We won't put a disk in for the moment. Let's just have a look. So if, for example, we use one of the... Um, things here is a dump, so if we use the dump command, D-U-M-P, it's uppercase, um, it says enter the address, if we go right back to the beginning I can show you the original piece of paper, this is the program, so this starts number one, this is the beginning of the EEPROM, so if we say OK, so it's 0000, zero, zero, zero one, two, three, four. that is dumping out the front end, which of course should coincide with 31006497 etc. So you can see, so that's the beginning of it. And you can obviously do it other ways. The system's been done so that you can actually, um, if you, what should we say, peak any location value, that's peak. So if we looked at peak um, 0070 then. That's it. And it's showing, it's just if you want to look at an individual one. That 7.0 is actually a 9.7. Okay, so the next one we look at is list. Now, this is not the same as dump. Dump takes it many address you want. List actually shows where the program is written. So if you write a program for this thing, it always starts at 7.006. So if we just do a list, L-I-S-T, that is the list from 7.006, and it's just showing it like that. So that is what is in there for the first 16 bytes. So of course that means there's two ways of doing things. If we hit return that goes back to our J prompt again. Yes it will appear as many times as you like. Um, so if, we, if for example we did a, a dump 7006 it should come up with those again except for with the hex equivalent, uh, sorry with the ASCII equivalents. So dump 7006. I made a mistake. It's not dump 7006, it's a dump first of all, then 7006, 4272. So that is actually showing that there is something in that program. Um, this was actually a um, British Caledonian talk that I've done about the Airways 1970-1987 and that just happens to be in there. If we turn the thing off it will come up with gobbledygook obviously. So. Just to show how poke works, I mean it's just like a, an ordinary um, basic computer. If you write in poke, let's let's change that first letter there um, from a 42. If we make it a 43, it will be a C. So if we do poke, what address we want to put in 7006, 7006. In fact, if I put a comma and I put We'll put several C's in there just to show that they can come after each other. So it's, uh, what's the C again? It's 43, so it's 43. And now if we press return, it'll put just change the 1. But if we put 43, and uh, that's it. Now that has actually loaded the first four locations from 7006, 7, 8, and 9. So if we now do a dump, 7006. So you see we have our now have our our first uh, 43s in the first locations. What we'll do now is I will disconnect the now I've turned off the power to the UDSS, so we've lost all that memory there. So hopefully if we turn it back on again, there we go, it's come back on again. And if we dump 7006 as it's a non-volatile, oh sorry, it's a volatile memory, 7006, if we do a dump, 7006, yeah, D, 
this is the rubbish that's in there since it came on. So this is, say, is where the program normally sits. What we do now is we will put a disc in. Here we have a parrot disc, no other no, no, parrots, um, and it's a five and a quarter inch. This is single sided, single density, but we formatted it as double sided, double density because I virtually have none of these. They've all gone gone off, you know, and the oxide's coming off and making a mess in the heads in the disk drive. So this one actually works a double sided. I wouldn't, in practice, you wouldn't use this because it's been proved it's not good on the second side. That's why they call it single sided, but it has oxide on both sides. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in here. I'll put it in the disk drive. Now, if we type a directory command, which is dir, there you go. That's what the disk name is. For some reason, um, they're not sectors or anything, it's links. I think this must go back to one of the old word processing systems. They used to call their storage space links. So strangely enough, this has been done like that. Anyway, there we go. That's the disk name, it's Parrot. Nothing in it at all. So what we can do here, just for the uh, fun of it really, is to show how format works on it. So this is the format for the JDOS system. So if we type format, F-O-R-M-A-T, it's warning us that all existing data will be lost. Are you sure? Quite right. So if I hit a Y, here yeah, the it starts up. And you can see it's formatting one side and the other. It should very soon come up with the either pass or fail and if it passes it will expect us to uh, enter in a disk name which of course we'll, we'll probably put here we go so it must have passed so we put in disk name which is parrot let's put in parrot again for me and an exclamation mark two exclamation marks okay and hit return that's it so now if we hit directory again it now should say Set. So it's still all free and that's that's after formatting the disk. Right, so let's take that parrot disk out. It's the parrot disk. Put that back in its little case. Now we have here a disk with two um, files on it. One is a program called it was text editor. About, there's 28 sheets and there was about 4k of typing to put it in because it was corrupt. Now uh, I just can't be asked to sit and type in 4,000 characters on this thing just to demonstrate it. So what I've done is I've typed in the first part, put a system halt on it so you actually see the header coming up as it was on the original program um, just to show what the program would have looked like when it came up on the screen. And also there's the text file of BCAL which is just showing how it works with the text file. So we pop that in there. That's it. If we now do a directory on the that disk, we actually have two files in it. It shows there's 234 links free. I don't know how big a link is. One could sit down and work it out. Uh, T start is actually the beginning of the text editor. As I said, I put in a part of it and I put a 76, in which in Z80 means halt, so it halts the entire processor at that point. And this one's just text. So if we type in, um, what's it called? Oh, load, isn't it? Sorry, I'm having to look at the instructions. So we type in load. And it's saying which one, this is the only program, that's not a program, that one is. So we try T start, what it should do is download the program, put it in from 7006 7, and then run the program. So it does it automatically uh, and it should come up with the text header and it will stop dead because that's all I've typed in. I typed in, um, I don't know how many how many bytes to do it, but it actually has, has all the subroutines uh, and so on. So if I hit, 
That's it. I'm sorry, that's all it does. But this was the original JDOS text entry program, and then it came up with a list of things that you do. You, you can save it, edit it, and it came up with like Control S for save, etc., etc. And the rest of it, and you simply um, type in your text a bit. It's just like a simple word processor. So at this point in time, the microprocessor has a 76, which is a halt, which means it's it's frozen. It can't do anything. So what we have to do is press a reset to overcome that. There we go. So we've now gone back to the uh, startup screen. Okay, the only other thing we can show you is a text. I put a text file on, I dumped it earlier on so that we can actually use it. You used to be able to print it and everything, but as I say, half the pro all of the programs have gone corrupt, sadly, because the disks just deteriorated over time. I mean, they're a few years since they were done. Okay, so if we now look at what is called read, that makes sense, doesn't it? So we type in read, R E A D, and it enter the file name. Now it's uh, BCAL, I think it was, wasn't it? So let's try it. B C A L. Now, interestingly enough, nothing further has happened, and the reason is because it wants to know how we want to actually transmit that file. It's necessary at this point to go to the screen um, because this could work as a standalone device. It would actually work on its own without the serial connection at all. So it just wants to know where you want to send it to. So what it's saying is press S1. There's only two switches. S1 is carriage return. Or S S2, press second switch if you want carriage return and line feed. Um, what we're going to do is we will press the blue one, um, which is carriage return and line feed. So if I swing back to the uh, screen, And let's pull it out a little bit. And if we press the blue one, which is casual turn line feed, this is now the document from the disk. And that's it. Right, well there we go. That is the Universal Disk Storage System. Uh, you have to decide whether or not you think that is a total overkill instead of just buying a system. Is this worse than the video down the phone line? One have to ask. Let me know in your comments if you <laughs> if you have any opinions on it. Thanks for watching.